I think it's more than fair to say that Neera Smith is a polarizing figure online. She has a large audience that tunes in to see what she does in the day as a stay-at-home mom, all the different recipes she's making, and to see if her husband is available and looking for a partner. However, there's also a very loud side of the internet that criticizes her for promoting this trad wife lifestyle while actually not living the trad wife lifestyle. And sure, she does promote this stay-at-home trad wife lifestyle. I believe she's specifically Mormon. She's mentioned it a couple of times. But why people are criticizing her is because if you look at her following, she has millions of followers on TikTok and nearly a million on Instagram, not to mention any other platforms. Without my following, I do want to preface this by saying that the internet does not know her personal finances. But just based off of speculation from views, the type of sub products that she uses, and her overall style and engagement, she could very likely be pulling at least six figures off of TikTok alone. But we're talking about a different side of her that some people have been glossing over, but keen eyed viewers have noticed, and that is that she can't really bake. Now, she has mentioned this herself before in videos, that she's newer to baking, so she's not as proficient as she'd like to be, but she is actively working to become better. But from one content food creator to another, she's committed the cardinal sin, not including a recipe. So different creators do this differently. Some just give a very detailed explanation in the video. Some just put captions in the video, giving the measurements, the times, and stuff like that. Other people put the whole recipe in the description. I've even seen people who link over to like their blog of their website where they keep all the recipes. The last one I like a little bit less because I would like to have all the information easily accessible in the video if you're going to be making a how to make this thing. Maybe it should actually include how to make that thing. But as far as I can find, Nira doesn't have any of that. She has a sub stack that I looked at briefly but didn't immediately see any recipes jump out. In all of her videos, she uses vague language. Like I added some flour. Uh, a little bit of maple syrup, that sort of thing. For a lot of the recipes, she doesn't even say what temperature she's baking things at. So I decided to take two of her viral recipes and using only what's in the video, see if I can recreate them. And if they're actually even worth recreating. You know what this is. You know what this is. It's a series now. But before we get into that, subscribe. As I just said, this is a series on this channel where we take viral recipes of the internet, recreate them as someone who cannot cook very well, and see, are they actually worth it? Do they taste good? Are they time worth it? Like, what's the deal here? You can also follow me as Sir Glenneth on Instagram and TikTok. Instagram is more personal stuff. I'm a menace on the stories, and my reels are messy, but funny. Very personality-driven. And then over on my TikTok, that's where I focus a lot more on drinks specifically. So bartending, uh, and mocktail stuff. That's really what you get over there. So yeah, a lot of fun. Like I said, it's so glad everywhere, so might as well. Now, like I said, we're doing two recipes. And these didn't just go viral. They went viral on Twitter. So the first one is when she, according to her own video, asked her toddlers what they want for breakfast. And when they said cereal, she proceeded to make cereal from scratch for them. And the other one is a homemade Oreo recipe that went famous because she didn't say like any measurements, any temperatures, any cook time, like anything. So, let's get cooking. As I mentioned before, Nara never gave us measurements, so we're following as close as we can. I used half a cup of flour, two tablespoons of peanut butter, and one ounce of 85% cocoa chocolate. Then I added two ounces of pure maple syrup and a quarter of a cup of unsweetened almond milk. Now I'm going to stir it all up until it's well combined. Oddly enough, I think I kind of nailed the measurements on this one, so I'm not particularly worried about how this cereal will turn out. Once there's no more visible flour, set it aside, and then we run into another problem, which is that she never told us what temperature to bake it at, so I hit 350 and pray for the best. Here's where things got rough. I used half a cup of flour, two tablespoons of peanut butter, a tablespoon of cocoa powder, and two ounces of pure maple syrup. As you can see, that came out extremely dry, so I took about a third of that mixture, added another ounce of maple syrup, and that got me to the consistency that I needed. I'm being a bit snotty here, because her recipe used nut butter, TM, and I decided to use peanut butter, because it's still a nut. Alright, baking sheet and parchment paper, lay out bite-sized rolls, and let's throw it in the oven for, she said, 10 to 13 minutes. I I hope that's enough. Let's get started on these Oreos. Again, no recipe, so we're using half a cup of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Thoroughly stir together your dry ingredients and set them aside. Then we're going to combine a quarter of a cup of melted butter and sugar until it's light and fluffy. Once we're at the right texture, we'll crack one egg and stir it in. Once it's thoroughly mixed, it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients together. 
I might have nailed the measurements on this, because with a little bit of elbow grease, it came out to the perfect consistency. Maybe I'm a better cook than I give myself credit for. Once we're done mixing, now it says to cover in saran wrap and throw the bowl in the fridge for 10 minutes. Well, would you look at that. They're done, and they look pretty close to Nara's if you ask me. Once those 10 minutes are done, we have our baking sheet and parchment paper, roll the dough and carefully place them, because we have to squish them down to that flat Oreo type shape. Nara says to bake them for 10 minutes, but doesn't give us a temperature again, so we're doing 350. While it's baking, we take a quarter of a cup of butter, sugar, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, this being for the Oreo filling. Put me on the Great British Bake Off, because I nailed these cookies. I don't remember the last time I had an Oreo that wasn't double stuffed, so we're adding a lot of filling to each of these. Use a discretion, so do what you like best. Obviously we're going to combine our two sets of homemade cereal with a little bit of unsweetened almond milk. While these look pretty identical to Nara's video, let's see if they're worth eating. Well, nothing left to do now but try it. So, a very predictable result for the cereal. It's not crunchy at all. It's just sweet enough that you're expecting it to hit eventually, and it just doesn't. Okay, now an Oreo. Big boys, aren't they? Okay, these are a lot better. I like the taste. I like the crunch. I like the frosting, like the filling in the middle. That's all really good, but definitely still has that homemade feel to it, which really makes it taste better. It really captures a different flavor than your regular Oreos would. So these I can actually get behind. However, then I remember how much time I spent making these, as opposed to just running to the store and grabbing a cookies and cream cereal and a package of double stuffed Oreos. And immediately it's like, wow, yeah, definitely not worth it. My roommate could be home any second, and I'm scared because how I rate this, the cereal, I don't want her to even know that I made it because that's embarrassing. The Oreos, maybe, maybe I'll offer her one, but that's very, like, <sighs> so overall, I would say that I would definitely not make these for anyone else. I wouldn't make them for myself either. So I think this is the lowest score we have so far. Perhaps if I had the actual recipe, it could have come out better, but... Here we are, following her videos. So thank you everyone for watching this video. I would like to apologize for the result, but I kind of already knew that that was what was going to happen. That's why I chose to do this video, because based off of what I was seeing, I was like, oh, obviously if you want to make it for yourself, go right ahead. I want to see your opinions. In fact, make these and then comment down below. What do you think? Am I a little bit too harsh? Is these actually really good recipes? Do they come out amazing for you? Is it like user error here? I want to know. As long as you're down there, like this video and subscribe. Like I said, videos like this all the time. I love cooking. I'm trying to get better at it. So this is just an excuse for me to do that. Again, reminder, I'm Sir Gleneth on TikTok and Instagram. TikTok for bartending and mocktails. Instagram for my personality and to see me wild and out. I think that's all I need, guys. So let's have some fun and smile because there are so many better recipes out there, especially for cookies and for, I guess, cereal. Maybe for cereal, just go to the store.